Hi guys. So a short video about the commodity cycle because I think people are wrong in uh, starting to invest in this already. Um, um, <clears throat> uh, so the commodity cycle, um, for example, gold or uranium, uh, I've been studying a little bit. And, um, and I think for gold, um, gold has gone up from 2000 to 2011 from around, um, was it $200? Yes, $2,800. So that's a huge increase, way above real inflation of 5%. It went up by, I don't know, on average 15% per year or so, or maybe even 20. Um, so, so, so that's very rare. Uh, the last time that happened was in the 70s when it went up from, was it... Was it twenty dollars to eight hundred dollars, something like that? Uh, and then it collapsed from eight hundred dollars to two hundred dollars for a period of twenty years. And um, <clears throat> uh, this this is this is the cycle of, of of gold because before that it was also a long period of time that gold did not go up. Uh, actually, from the nineteen thirty to nineteen seventy, so so that was fifty years. Uh, uh, but of course, it was linked to it was it was a bit um, scooped because it was uh, government mandated the price. Uh, but um, <clears throat> still, if you go back in time, you will see that um, over the last two hundred years or so, that a, a, a gold cycle where price of gold goes up a lot and production also follows and goes up a lot. Um, it, it is not every 10 years, it's every <clears throat> 20 to 30 years. <clears throat> Actually 30 years, eh? because the last one, it started rising at 72, and, uh, and, uh, and, um, or 70, and, um, and it started rising again in 2000. So that's every 30 years. So, um, is it time now for a gold cycle? No, we just had one. So it, uh, the next one will start in 2030. Uh, um, so uh, until then price will likely go down uh, but okay uh, we need more evidence uh, because it's true that there was also a commodity cycle uh, in the in end of 80s but it was not oh, okay gold also went up because it collapsed from $800 uh, in, in 1980 uh, the peak to um, was it $300 and then in 1985 and it went over or 250 and then went back up to 400 uh, to $500 uh, at the end of the 80s so and many other commodities went up also at the end of the 80s but after that it continued to go down and, and find a low 10 years later at $200 so uh, actually, if you look at that chart, you will see that mm, that was not a commodity bull market at the end of the 80s. It was actually, at least for gold, uh, it continued to be, actually, it was just a rebound. Uh, and, it, and the bear market was for the full 80s and 90s. And so, um, <clears throat> and so of course, um, uh, uh, gold today has gone down from $1,800 in 2011 to now $1,300 and the lowest maybe $1,100 or so a couple of years back but but this is very recent uh, 2011 or 2018 that's nine years ago very likely it will take another decade uh, of bear market and maybe it goes up for one two years that's possible but the long-term trend is that it's a bear market the other evidence for this is, is in production, and so gold mining production, I think this is very interesting. Um, uh, to, to study these numbers, uh, you see that gold mining production goes up a lot after the price goes up. So in the 70s, the uh, price went up a lot, while in the 80s and, and 90s, production went up a lot too. Eh? So the amount of gold mined per year went up year after year. And that's because it was very profitable to mine gold after the price went up a lot. We've seen the same happen now. Uh, after 2011, uh, gold production started to go up a lot year over year. And, um, and what you see also typically at the end of the bear market uh, that um, uh, uh, the gold production goes down. So instead of going up year over year, it flattens and then starts to go down. The amount of gold mined year over year goes down. This happened 
<clears throat> and that's very interesting to see, uh, in the early 70s and 60s, for a couple of years, amount of gold produced went down. So that means that, uh, that's really great to see, and the same happened um, very, very recently, uh, between 2000 and 2005. And, and so, but this is also a very rare event, uh, that the amount of gold mined goes down globally. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 this is, of course, because the price of gold is below the production costs, and so gold mines are starting to close down, uh, the, uh, the less competitive ones. Um, uh, and this is the best evidence uh, to, to really believe the story that gold... Uh, I, production costs are above the value of the commodity because this is set way too quickly <clears throat> by commodity investors as they believe the stories of miners. Uh, uh, but, but of course, um, uh, and of course it's true that for the moment the bear market starts, uh, that, that mines are starting to shut down, uh, the least competitive ones, but the total amount of gold produced continues to go up um, and and so what's typical is that when when um, this this mining I, this production cost is very tricky because um, it does go down over time production cost in general it goes down over time eh, because operations mines producers factories they become always more efficient in doing their job um, but uh, in, in a commodity cycle it's much worse than that um, the average production costs. They take all mines together and see, okay, he's produced for this price, the other one for this price was the average. But if, if you get a bear market and so the price starts to collapse due to oversupply, many uncompetitive mines or producers start to close down. So that brings down the average production cost. But also other commodities start to go down in price and so their, their, their supplies that they need for energy or food in the case of agricultural commodities or, 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 or fertilizer, or, um, but especially for mining, it's of course oil and fuel. Well, these prices go down too. And so, uh, so that makes their operation cheaper or their production cost cheaper. Uh, other uh, things that make the production cost go down is, is competition <clears throat> because there are less competitors. Their service providers, all the third party companies that provide services to these industries have less clients and need to also, um, um, and, and so there's no bidding up anymore for their services. For example, when you have oil boom, uh, the, one, the, the, the ones offering the, the drilling equipment, they can just set uh, crazy prices because everybody needs them and there, is, uh, there is not enough competition. Uh, but but uh, the inverse is true in a bear market. Uh, nobody is interested anymore in the drilling equipment and so uh, yeah, they need to really rent it out for uh, a much cheaper <coughs> to, get rid of, uh, to, to get it uh, used. There are also by that time many other competitors in the same business. <coughs> so it's a price war. So that also reduces the production costs of the commodity. Um, and then there is one final factor and that is, of course, efficiencies and savings. These mining operations, of course, as the pro uh, commodity price goes down, um, they start to see their uh, profit margins uh, evaporate and co other competitors uh, go broke uh, or out of business. And so they are really motivated to start um, uh, implementing efficiencies in the, in the mining, uh, in the mines or in the production factories uh, uh, to cut back costs in, in, in equipment that they use, in, in, in processes that they uh, apply and, and, and people that they employ. So all these things have a continuous downward pressure on the production cost. And so even though, the, 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 let's say for gold, you could say, okay, today gold is sold at 1,300 US dollars and the, the average production cost is 1,200 dollars. Or, or so there is almost no profit margin. Uh, yeah, but as the price of gold goes down, the production cost will also go down. And, and so as, as a result, um, it will continue to stay profitable uh, for the average miner to mine gold and so you will see continue to see an increase a yearly increase of the amount of gold mined 
Uh, and this is what I predict for gold. Um, the price just boomed uh, 10 years ago. It will take another 10 years uh, uh, that you will see the amount of gold produced go up. And only then uh, you will start to see that there is no cutting back anymore possible, that, that only the biggest, most efficient producers have survived and that they are unable to... Uh, uh, to implement any more savings and so that they are also starting to um, run at a loss and uh, are starting to cut back. Um, so this is what we see today already in uranium that the biggest producers are starting to cut back. But what really concerns me there is that they are not cutting back because they are losing money. Uh, and these Kazakhstan um, producers no, they are cutting back because they want to make more money, huh? uh, because they think that uh, uh, they want to sell, they want to IPO their company, and, and, and so they want to sell their prices for a good uh, a good amount, so the shares, and, and so they for that they would like to see a higher uh, uranium price, but um, that's not uh, that's not um, the right the right motivation to cut back uh, production. Um, I mean, that's just not going to hold. There will be other competitors that will... Uh, because w w what the industry or many investors say and believe is that the production cost now is below uh, the price of uranium, which is now $20. And so they believe the, the production cost is $40, or some say even $60, and so they make a loss. But um, the total amount of uranium produced has continued to go up uh, globally uh, until the last numbers I've seen 2016. Uh, and we're still waiting for the numbers of 2017 to come in because that's the first year that this uh, Kazakhstan uh, that has 40% of the mining um, um, share uh, has started to cut back about 20%, they say. And so this might result in, in a lower, uh, that in a first year of flat or declining uranium production. We will have to see and wait, wait and see. If that happens, that's a very good first sign. But also in the uranium cycle, you see that it will take several years uh, of, of, of continuing uh, 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 declining production numbers of uranium uh, before we will see the low. At least that's how it was in the past, so <clears throat> that's the best odds for it to happen again in the future. Um, but, but, uh, but, uh, but we will have to see if that even happens, because it is possible that, um, that production does not decline and that by 2020, when you study the numbers, uranium production has continued to go up in 19, uh, 20, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and so we're, we're not at all, uh, I, and so the people that invest today, I mean, were just proven wrong uh, that uh, that that production cost was um, was above uh, the value of the price of of the of, of the commodity uranium. Uh, I, I suspect that's what's going to happen uh, because um, uh, because uranium is also not historically cheap today. It's twenty dollars. It's the same as the historically cheap price of ten dollars that happened uh, in the nineties and and that that ended in two thousand and three. That was the last time that uranium was very cheap. It was about ten dollars. Then it went up to one hundred forty dollars or so uh, by two thousand seven, and then it collapsed now to twenty dollars. Uh, but 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 twenty dollars is not cheaper than $10 in 2003. That's actually the same price because you have about 5% real inflation uh, for US dollar a euro. So, so $10 15 years ago is $20 today. And so typical for a commodity cycle is that the bear market ends when the price of the commodity is cheaper than it has ever been inflation adjusted, real inflation adjusted of 5% per year. Uh, and so this is not the case with uranium yet, but will be the case if it would cost only $10. Um, and, and I think that's, that's the most likely to happen, that we will see in a, a couple of years um, 
five years, ten years, an Iranian price of ten dollars. In the meantime, it can go up from twenty to forty or to sixty. There always uh, and nothing goes down in a straight line, and uranium has gone down in uh, pretty much a straight line. So a multi-year rebound is possible, but I think the final low will be found um, only in 10 years or so. Um, these commodity cycles are pretty parallel. Uh, just look at, um, at, 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 at the chart of, of, that I will link below here uh, again, because I linked it in my previous video too, of the price of uranium versus the amount of uranium produced. And, 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 and you can see there that um, it looks like we're not, uh, not the, at the end of the bear market. So um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Please uh, share uh, my videos on your Facebook or Twitter. I really appreciate that uh, to get the word out. I think, um, uh, I think um, this is very important uh, and not, not such a difficult call to make because it's just, we just had a commodity boom in 2000 to 2007. Um, uh, or for gold till 2011. Um, this is um, like thinking that after a 10 year bear market in commodities that we're ready for a new bull market. Uh, I don't think it's founded. It's possible to have like in the end of the 80s a rebound, but a real commodity cycle, um, not yet. And so uh, if you start investing in that sector today, uh, you are probably going to waste 10 years um, uh, and um, and see the value, the purchasing power of your capital be cut in half uh, in 10 years time. That's just a, a huge missed opportunity and an actual real financial loss also. So I really, uh, I really think it's way too risky uh, to do that now. Uh, even though geopolitical, you could say that uh, uh, Trump is starting with trade wars and but this is all of no importance if you, you have to look at the, at the cycles. Uh, politicians follow people's opinions, people's opinions follow market prices. Market prices uh, follow the cycles uh, of supply and demand. Bye.